Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Some time ago I made a button to pixel lag analysis for Overwatch, which showed that the delay between pressing a button on your mouse and having your character perform the action on the monitor is quite low. But this delay can never be small enough as less delay means that the game feels more responsive. So in today's video I want to show you what happens when you change the value for the maximum pre-rendered frames inside of the Nvidia control panel, as well as what kind of an impact the new reduce buffering option has that Blizzard introduced in yesterday's patch. But first, how do I test the responsiveness of a game? For that I use a high speed camera, a gaming monitor and a mouse which has a LED connected directly to its left mouse button which will light up when I press it. Inside the game I map the move left action to the left mouse button, so that my character will move to the left when I press it. For every test case I repeat this 20 times and then I take the recorded high speed footage where I look for the moment where the LED lights up and then I count the frames until I see the image change on the monitor. This then allows me to calculate the delay between pressing the left mouse button and the monitor showing me the result of that input. So as I said, we will have a look at two different features and how or if they affect the delay. The first one is the maximum pre-rendered frames. What this feature does is that it limits the number of frames the CPU can prepare before the frames are processed by the GPU. Increasing this value can result in smoother gameplay at lower frame rates. So by default the 3D application will use the value that the developers defined inside of the engine. But if you want then you can also override this value set by the developers and have all games use a specific value. Or you can set different values for every game or 3D application. Based on many suggestions that you can find on the internet you must set this value to 1 as that should reduce the delay between your input and the display. The other feature that I want to take a look at is the reduce buffering option that is now available inside the video settings of Overwatch. This should cause that an image leaves the buffer earlier, which means that there should be less delay between rendering an image and sending it to the monitor. Now let's have a look at the test results to find out how these features affect the delay or if they affect it at all. So in my first set of tests I used a display refresh rate of 60Hz, all graphic options were set to the lowest possible level and G-Sync, V-Sync as well as triple buffering were disabled. So with the maximum pre-rendered frames set to the default, which means that the application controls it, and with the frame rate in Overwatch limited to 66 FPS, I measured an average button to pixel lag of 58.82 milliseconds. When I then changed the maximum pre-rendered frames setting to 1, which according to many people in the forums should reduce the delay, then the average delay did not change at all. Which means that Overwatch is already using a value of 1 for the maximum pre-rendered frames. So if you set that to 1 inside of the NVIDIA control panel, then this will not reduce the delay inside of Overwatch. However, it can reduce the delay in other games where the developers choose to use a higher value. Now how about the reduce buffering option? When we turn it on, then the average delay decreases by about 14 milliseconds, which is nearly one frame at 60 Hz. However, when you already played Overwatch at a very high frame rate, like 300 FPS, then your button to pixel delay was already as low as it now gets with the new reduce buffer option. And when you enable it while playing at such high frame rates then it still has an impact, but a much smaller one than for those who have previously played the game at around 60 fps at 60 hertz. At 144 hertz the results are very similar. There is no difference between letting the game control the maximum pre-rendered frames and forcing one as value inside of the Nvidia control panel. When I switched on the reduce buffering option then this also caused a delay decrease of about one frame at 144Hz. And at frame rates that are much higher than your display refresh rate we can also see the same behavior as in the 60Hz tests. So based on these results you will not get a delay decrease by forcing a maximum pre-rendered frames value of 1. However as I said this can be different in other games. The reduce buffering option can lead to a delay decrease of one frame, but only if your frame rate is about the same as your display's refresh rate. If you have been playing Overwatch at very high frame rates already, then the delay decrease will not be as big. So this new reduce buffering option has a smaller impact on the delay than most players were hoping for. However, you must understand that in order to keep the delays low and ensure that the game feels responsive, you don't just tweak one small aspect of the game. 
Sure, the reduced buffering option does not reduce the delays massively, but you have to see it as one step towards further decreasing the delay in the game. And many of these smaller steps can then lead to a quite significant delay decrease. That said, the delay between the input and the display is already quite good. So I hope that you enjoyed this updated button to pixel lag analysis of Overwatch. And if you like this kind of niche content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. Also, if you want to know what I'm currently working on, then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook. The links are also in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.